Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Most of the world's manufactured products and goods are transported from one continent to the other by container ships. There are over 5,500 container ships crisscrossing the high seas today. Not a very impressive number, but these monstrous vessels are responsible for moving almost 72 million shipping containers, with an estimated 300,000 new ones added to the fleet every year. But despite their sizes, impressive capacities, and robust buildups, there always comes a time when these giants of the seas laden with their heavy cargo require some real assistance. Assistance that must come from robust tugboats, which are usually a thousand times smaller than them. Maneuvering into ports, harbors, canals, and areas where there is boat traffic to either unload or pick up their freight is always a hard task for large maritime vessels like container ships. When on full stake in the open seas, they can maneuver around, but at low speeds, their turning circles become wider, making it impossible to dodge around obstacles. Helping them around can be hard, and sometimes dangerous, even for the tugboat and its workers who must be adequately trained and experienced to be able to pull these large ships to safety. During their approach, the large container ships will radio in and request a tug service before they arrive at the port where they will need assistance. One tugboat or more will then go out and meet the large ship. In cases where the vessel needs to be towed, a tow line is connected from the tug to the vessel. Tow lines are usually tough, 12-strand ropes made of ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. which, when combined with the immense power of the tugboat's engine, can pull a 200,000-ton container ship without braking. By pushing and pulling, tugboats will lead them around vessels, turns, docks, and any other physical items that might be in the way. This must be an orderly process with great attention to detail so that all lives and equipment in the vicinity are protected. Apart from crowded port areas, massive container ships also need lots of help traversing canals. These artificial waterways were generally built to facilitate passage for boats and smaller ships from one water body to the other. But in recent times, most of them have been modified and expanded to accommodate today's massive vessels. The Panama Canal, for instance, divides North and South America with a 51-mile-long waterway connecting the Atlantic with the Pacific Ocean. Its construction was completed in 1914, but later expanded in 2016 at the cost of over $5 billion. Massive container ships must be maneuvered through its separate water chambers and gates controlled by three sets of 12 locks. It takes up to 10 hours for a container ship to cross from one side to the other. To help the ships through, the expanded Panama Canal has a fleet of 46 tugboats and towing locomotives, or mules, moving on rails built on the canal walls. With these facilities, nearly 97% of the world's container ships are now able to safely transit the canal. Over in Europe, the Corinth Canal in Greece is another architectural marvel, constructed since 1893. 
The four-mile-long Corinth Canal is only 70 feet wide at its base and bordered by 170 feet high walls on both sides, making it a no-go passage for gigantic cargo carriers and cruise ships. Nevertheless, in October 2019, Fred Olson Cruise Line set a world record when cruise ship Braemar became the longest ship to ever go through the Corinth Canal. The massive 640 feet vessel made the crossing during a 25 day itinerary. To make it more special, hundreds of passengers were on board and watched excitedly as the vessel was precariously towed and maneuvered by tugboats through the narrow passageway. The ship performed this tight crossing with the high walls of the canal just a few feet away on either side. By virtue of its restrictive size, the canal is mainly used by boats and tourist ships. Around 11,000 vessels go through it each year. It is worth noting, however, that sailing through this waterway between the Corinth and Saronic Gulfs will save every ship a journey of 185 nautical miles. In addition to container ships and cruise ships, there is another type of large transport machinery that sometimes needs help moving around. That would be the airplane. While they travel through our skies, transporting goods and passengers, they are incredible engineering designs. However, there is one area where they are lacking, moving backwards. While still on the ground, planes can easily move forward, but when the need arises, they cannot move backwards on their own. For this task, airports around the world employ the services of powerful trucks called pushbacks. The flat, sturdy-looking airport tugs can easily move 500-ton planes from one part of the airport to the other. They do this using a tow bar which is attached to the nose wheel landing gear strut of the aircraft. Pushback trucks are relatively light with some weighing less than a ton, but they are fitted with extremely robust hydraulic systems to compensate for this disadvantage. The safety protocols are stringent. Each plane displacement operation is closely monitored by the airport ramp operator. They remain in regular communication with the pushback driver and the aircraft pilot. Aircraft of all sizes make use of these tugs at one time or the other, given that none of them are manufactured with the reverse gear. Once the plane has been moved to the desired position, the pushback truck and plane detach from each other. The pushback then leaves, taking the tow bar along. Pushback trucks in our airports and tugboats in our seaports are perfect examples of very small vehicles helping to facilitate the jobs of far bigger vehicles in a way that is always so fascinating to see. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.